And we're at Delaware Valley Bluegrass Festival. We are with Mark Schatz, who we've been looking really forward to hanging out with and, and saying hello to. Mark's up for Best Bass Player of the Year Award at IBMA. We're looking forward to that. And he's always has so much going on, and it's a real big pleasure. Mark, uh, thanks for talking to us here. Uh, hey, uh, backstage view. Hey, Scott. And uh, good to see you here at uh, Del Fest. Uh, not Del Fest, the Delaware Valley. Delaware Blue Valley. Valley. Okay, right. close enough. Now, uh, now, Mark, uh, we were just uh, watching Dan Paisley, and you came out and uh, you did a little surprise. Tell, tell us what uh, went down there. Well, uh, you know, I am here uh, with uh, Footworks Percussive Dance Ensemble. We performed yesterday, Friday, uh, actually doing a collaboration that Eileen Carson, my wife, uh, arranged uh, called Steppin at the Junction, which is a collaboration between Footworks and, uh, and Charm City Junction. It's a beautiful show, and I actually came as a dancer to this festival. I haven't, haven't played a note, and that's, uh, that's unusual for me. That, that is unusual, and, and be, on, on behalf of the whole bluegrass community, uh, our sincere sympathies about your wife, who last year, I believe it was, uh, or the year before, you guys were here dancing away also, and we've seen you at other festivals, like Gray Fox dancing away, and uh, you, you are the dancer. Well... I'm one of the dancers, my wife, she's the, she's the queen, right. the uh, clogging queen, and uh, beautiful, beautiful clogger, one of the most beautiful uh, dancers that I've ever seen doing that kind of dance, really any kind of dance, she's just a fantastic mover. But uh, yeah, we were here uh, a couple of years ago with Footworks, and the two of us just came here last year. I think I was here with Jeff Scroggins. Yes, yeah, yeah, we had some good video of you guys in a big cir in a circle with uh, some kids dancing around. Right, yeah. so, but you asked about Danny. Um, yeah, the set, Danny Paisley just did a set and uh, he invited the dancers from Footworks to jump up there on a great fiddle tune. Yeah. And uh, so we did it and got up there and we kind of shook a tail feather, yeah. as they say. Uh, yes. well, well, I know you've got so much going on. You're, you're up for Bass Player of the Year Award. Uh, that's exciting. And uh, you're playing with a lot of people. You just mentioned something that you're doing with uh, Bela. What, what's that about? Well, to tell you the truth, in the last year and a half, I kind of uh, uh, took myself out of a lot of uh, touring to care for my wife, who uh, recently passed away. And uh, so, uh, and taking a little time now, which is afforded me uh, by the generosity of, of the community. You know, there was a GoFundMe page, and uh, uh, IBMA kicked in funds to help support us and help, uh, help me stay home with her. So uh, things are, I'm kind of letting, taking a little space now. But uh, I did have the opportunity to go down to Brevard, North Carolina, and was the uh, the bass player, the staff bass player for Bela's banjo camp down there, and that was a really really amazing experience and opportunity. Uh, the teachers were Bela, Noam Pekelny, uh, Kristen Scott Benson, and uh, Alan Monday, and uh, it was it was great. He's it was uh, it's the second year of that, and uh, it was nice in a way not to have to teach and have kind of the freedom to just be there, and uh, and to be able to just be the the guy on call. And add a good thump to you know underneath all those banjos. Well, we we've seen you over the years with with so many artists, and uh, even way back when when we look at some of the classic uh, uh, bluegrass, you're, you're you're the bass player, just part of that whole classic team. When when did it all start for you, the the playing bluegrass with all these great people, and uh, uh, don't you have a past history with Bela that dates back quite a bit? Yeah, my history with Bela goes, goes way back. Um, it was uh, maybe 1970, let's see, 78, maybe around in there somewhere. Uh, I met him at, a, at an old time jam session in Cambridge. And uh, I came to this little jam session that a couple friends of mine were holding. And he was there just trying to learn to play the tunes. He wasn't playing anything fancy. Of course, we all know Bela can play some fancy stuff. And uh, after people were kind of drifting off and I started talking to him and I said, do you ever just kind of improvise over the chord changes of a fiddle tune? And he got a little twinkle in his eye and said, yeah, I, I do that sometimes. So we started playing something like Soldier's Joy and suddenly there were these amazing flights of, of, of banjo cascading notes. And I, you know, jaw dropped open and I, oh yeah, you can do that. And we got to be friends. We played a little bit of uh, jazz standards together because he was just starting to learn kind of uh, jazz a little bit and getting into that. And uh, a couple of years later, I was I just finished with college and was back in the Boston area, which is uh, where my family lives. And uh, the band he was in, Tasty Licks, their bass player left, and uh, he said, "Hey, this job is open. Do you want to try out audition?" 
So we got together and he gave me a few pointers about bluegrass bass playing because I had not played much bluegrass. That at was the, time. that was the beginning of, of bluegrass for you. That was well, I played a little bit out on the street before that, uh, a couple summers before, um, but this was really it was my first real professional job and first time playing bluegrass seriously. So that was with Tasty Licks, and uh, we went from there to uh, <coughs> Kentucky to be in a band called Spectrum, and then he went off with uh, join Newgrass Revival, and I. Uh, a few months later, half a year later, I went to Nashville as well. And uh, we stayed, remained friends. And when he did some of his uh, uh, very influential uh, acoustic projects, Drive and then the Bluegrass Sessions, he called on me. And it was just an amazing opportunity. I was kind of there for that. When, when uh, were you going to school for jazz bass in Boston? Well, I uh, actually got a degree uh, eventually from uh, Haverford College which is outside of Philadelphia, uh, really like good liberal arts school. But I took a year off between my sophomore and junior year there, uh, 75, 76, lived at home, which was in Lexington, Massachusetts, and studied at Berkeley College of Music, which uh, was a really, really, um, uh, it was a very helpful thing to do. I mean, I kind of call Berkeley uh, like a te technical school for pop music. And it was a whole different approach. I mean, they're, in the harmony, they start with the diatonic seventh chords. So I got a really good kind of basic uh, um, uh, education in jazz. And, uh, and also jazz, you know, when they teach the ear training, they're teaching da -da 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 jazz uh, articulations and rhythms. And uh, so in terms of practical knowledge, I'd say that was uh, maybe the most practical musical schooling that I got. Although the, you know, the classical theory and uh, composition uh, major at Haverford satisfied kind of a different kind of uh, different kind of sensibility. When uh, when did you meet Eileen? I met Eileen in 1989 at the it was the Berkshire uh, Mountain Bluegrass Festival. It's time. now Gray Fox. It's now Gray Fox and uh, she was there <coughs> with the fiddle puppet dancers. Uh -huh. I was there with Tony Rice <coughs> and uh, we sat down at a table across from each other you know in the, in the performers area over lunch and we kind of looked at each other and and uh, our eyes sparkled, and she saw that I had a briefcase. And she said, what are you doing with that briefcase? I said, well, I'm Tony Rice's road manager. And she suddenly, she get, that's when she really got a crush. Oh, here's, she's taught me to play a little bit. Here's this guy that can play this kind of new acoustic, really cool bluegrass music, and he's organized and responsible. Wow. And uh, so, uh, and we went off to watch Hot Rise together and sat shoulder to shoulder and you know, oh. romance. So Hot Rise is the band that was playing while you guys were falling in love. Well, we were sitting at that table, and they said, well, Hot Rise is about to come on. Do you want to go watch them together? Nice. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's kind of a special thing to sit next yeah. to someone when you're watching a great, some great so music. So, is that when you started dancing? No, I started clogging years and years before that. I had done some Israeli folk dancing as a kid. So oh, I, wow. I like to dance and kind of have a little bit of aptitude for, for dancing. And uh, that year that I uh, studied music at, at uh, Berkeley, I also got involved with a group called Mandala. They're an international folk dance ensemble. And I uh, played bass for them and ended up playing a little bit of trumpet and claw hammer banjo. Wow. And uh, one of the things they did was Southern Appalachian clogging. Oh. And I, I love percussion and I like to dance. And here was this dancing that was making percussion and dancing at the same time as that I got to learn how to do that stuff. And I was just learning how, learning how to play uh, the old time banjo, claw hammer banjo. And uh, so I, uh, learned some steps from them and then took a really great uh, workshop from a guy named Glenn Bannerman who is uh, from North Carolina and a very well-known uh, caller and uh, teacher there. And I still use some of the techniques he used to teach the basic step, this thing right here. <laughs> when I teach, when I do workshops of my own. So, uh, and then wherever I went, I looked for the cloggers. When I moved down to Kentucky to play with Spectrum, I found some uh, cloggers there and learned some steps from there and when I was in Nashville learned from a gal named Jackie Christian and so I was kind of collecting steps and staying uh, interested in it but when I uh, got together with Eileen and started being seeing the, how all these beautiful dances and steps that they did it was very much uh, st stepped up my game and, and you shared it with all of us because I remember watching you uh, with Nickel Creek and you would uh, break out do a little dance there that was great. I mean, they uh, <clears throat> they knew that a little bit of 
kinetic motion and energy would be good in the show. And they loved that I did that, and yeah. uh, they were open to it. Um, I did a little bit, bit of dancing with Tim O'Brien when I played with him, and of course, featured with Claire, Claire Lynch when I, uh, these years I played with her. But yeah, Nickel Creek, they loved it. In fact, Chris is quite a good dancer. And uh, Eileen, we, when he was quite young, we got together with him, and she taught him a couple of steps. Wow. So that I said, come on, Chris, you got to come up here and do a little, what they, it's called a combination. That's when you have certain steps, you know, in a row together. And I said, you got to do a little combination with me. So there was a time in those, that touring when he would jump up there and we did this little, uh, did a dance yeah. together. And that was Chris fun. Thiele being great at something. Geez, that's hard to really imagine. Chris Thiele what? Being great at something. Hard to imagine. Yes, it's hard I here. I mean, he's... Uh, Pretty, pretty fantastic in anything I've ever seen him do is what I mean. Yeah, it's good he found something that he was good at because, yeah. you know, it was hard to hard for him to find yeah. that. <laughs> well, so you're up for a Bass Player of the Year award. That's that's pretty exciting. That's It's great. It always is. It's wonderful to be nominated by, by the fans and your peers. And uh, I have won it a couple of times before in the past. And uh, there have been a couple of other awards uh, back there in the years. I won some back when Fretz was uh, doing their awards I've won that a couple times and uh, in fact one year I got the bluegrass award and I think Edgar Meyer got the jazz bass award oh, wow. and we did a thing called the double bass blues where the two of us played on one bass we worked up this little act in fact you can still see it on YouTube if really? you look it up uh, it was a Ralph Emery show look oh. up Mark and Edgar on the Ralph Emery show oh, absolutely. and uh, I've gotten some nice awards in our in my area as well uh, there's a Maryland State Arts Council I got an uh, individual artist award from them for composition, which is a nice recognition. And most recently, Eileen and I, as a couple, got a, an award like, uh, at the SURFA, the Southeastern Regional Folk Alliance, for contributions to Southern Southern culture. So that was wonderful to receive that. In fact, one of our co-receivers was uh, Norman and Nancy Blake. They got oh wow, that's exciting. Same award. So wow. it was good company. And you also uh, a producer. I saw. Uh, I know the Jeff Scroggins album, you produced that as well as played on it. Yeah, now and then if someone approaches me, I, uh, I uh, produce, uh, will do, have done some producing. And this was, uh, this was one of the kind of more uh, exciting projects for me because it's a very, very talented band. And uh, I was exciting to work with that level of talent and uh, had been playing with them a good bit uh, the year or two before that. And so it was a very uh, productive, successful collaboration. I thought they had respect for me and for my sensibilities, but uh, I like kind of a give and take. And I would say, well, let's try this, and we'd try it, and if, if it worked, it was great. And if I sometimes I'd say, well, how do you feel about that? And they go, oh, I don't know. And so it was, uh, it was. I'm very proud of that, and it turned out great. Really uh, love that record, and I hope folks will give that a listen. It's called uh, Over the Line. Right, right. Now, uh, what's the future look like now? Uh, I'm just kind of. Uh, I'm kind of uh, taking advantage of the space around me in a way. Uh, I need uh, time to heal and co collect my emotional self, you know, feel the feelings of, uh, of grief and loss, and they are profound. And uh, of course, being around the music and around people I know and the music I love is very healing. And uh, it's, good, it's good to stay busy. And uh, so in terms of what I'm gonna do, What's in front of me? It's kind of a, it's an open road right now. Uh, I don't know that I want to jump back into touring up and down the road. I mean, I love playing with the band. Um, I'm kind of thinking to do some uh, maybe smaller configurations and things where I'm a little more personally involved. Uh, I'm looking to do maybe a little tour. There's a wonderful uh, 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 Canadian uh, touring program called Home Roots where folks just solo or duo acts do tours of different areas across Canada. And uh, I'm thinking of maybe doing one with my old partner from Claire Lynch, uh, Brian McDowell, who's a fantastic multi-instrumentalist and just the greatest kid in the world. Uh, I think we might do a little duo. And I actually, Tony Trishka said a few months ago, said, Mark, you should do a solo show. And I said, what are you talking about? You know, I've always been the ensemble guy. You know, make, being part of a band, being the support guy. And he said, no, you could do it. You do all these different things. So it kind of got the gears going a little bit. And I thought, well, you know, maybe I should try that. I, maybe I should try it. And, uh, and so I actually just talked 
yesterday to a fellow named Archie Warnock, who's uh, involved with the festival here and has been for many years. He does a nice little house concert right down in my area, in the uh, Annapolis area. And he said, yeah, I'll uh, let you do your maiden voyage with me. So I'm going to give it a try. Uh, I think uh, November 10th, maybe, is what we kind of got temp tentatively penciled in. Wow, and is there a way we could uh, uh, stay in touch on uh, people to see where you're going to be? you have a website or anything like that? Wow, I do have a... Uh, I do have a website, and it's wonderfully informative, probably a lot more about me than you'd ever want to know. Uh, and there is a schedule on there, but at the moment, it's, I have not looked at it for a year. So it's terribly out of date, and uh, that will be on my to-do list okay. to get that uh, brought up to date so folks can see, can see these, uh, where I'm going to be. But uh, What's the name of it? Name of? The website. Oh, the website. Thank you. MarkShatz.net. Okay. M-A-R-K-S-C-H-A-T-Z dot net. Well, you're an inspiration, and we wish you only the most success in the world, and good luck on the Bass Player of the Year Award, and we look forward to seeing and hearing more of you, Mark. Well, thanks a lot, Scott, and I should mention that uh, I'm still um, wonderfully involved with the Footworks Percussive Dance Ensemble, and there's a lot of uh, kind of energy to maintain the group and, and move on with that, and, uh, and I can see some some nice, uh, maybe some new new compositions and some new choreography, as well as uh, kind of uh, bringing some of the old material back to light again. So uh, it's a great bunch of people, and awesome. so some energy going on there too. So there's there's good things ahead, and I'm just taking things slowly and one thing at a time. All right, well, great talking with you, Mark. Thanks so much, Scott.